It's Pyram King, and I'm very excited to bring to you Foundry version 10 adventures for Legends of Barovia. In this short guide, we're going to be discussing on how to install the V10 modules into Foundry and covering some exclusive content that you're only going to find in the V10 adventure modules for Legends of Barovia. Now, before I get started, a huge shout out to you, the supporters, and a special shout out to the legendary supporters who began joining me in January 2023 to bring Legends of Barovia to the entire community for free. We've already began releasing those gorgeous free PDFs. You can find those in the link in the description down below. And if you would like to join me and help me on this epic journey by becoming a donating member, you can by clicking on the link in the description down below. Now let's discuss version 10 modules. As a special thank you to you, the donating members to this epic project, I have gone and pulled all of the content edited by Jesse Winters from the free PDF guides, along with the gorgeous battle maps by DM Andy and the amazing looking to tokens by Tisu and some new Fear the Mind maps, wrap that all up with some sound packages into Foundry. We've done all the walling and lighting so you don't have to and included the links back to DND Beyond. Of course, you need to own that content for those links to work so you, the donating members, can enjoy Legends of Barovia in Foundry. Now, there are two ways to install this module, whether you are self-hosting on your own machine or you're using the Forge, which is a cloud-based service for Foundry. We're gonna go through both of those installations and then afterwards, I'm gonna show you some exclusive content that you're gonna only find in V10. Now, the first thing that you need to do is go to the parmking.com website, select Legends of Barovia, once you do, you're gonna select the module that you want to install into Foundry. In this case, we're gonna do the Counts Manor. We scroll down the Counts Manor and you're gonna find the button that says Foundry version 10. This is gonna take you to the members only section so that you can download the Counts Manor version 10 adventure module for Foundry. You're gonna hit click now, check out, and the first thing you're gonna notice in the order details is there is a URL in there. And in addition, there's a button at the bottom of the screen that says go to your items. Now we're gonna first install this on a self-hosted machine. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy the URL there in the order details, and you are going to go to your Foundry platform and click on add on module section, install modules, and there's a manifest URL on the bottom. You're gonna click in there and paste in that URL and click install. And that's it. The module is now installed on a self-hosted Foundry server. Now let's go through the process of installing it on the Forge. When we're back on that page, you notice I mentioned that button, go to your items. You're gonna click on that button and it's going to download a zip file of that adventure module. You're gonna download that wherever you wish to. I have it selected in my downloads folder. We're gonna to go to the Forge and you're gonna to go to the section called Game Configuration and click on Summon Import Wizard. You're gonna click on Zip File, find it in your, on your computer. Mine was in my downloads directory. Click uh, the Counts Manor zip file, hit Open, and you're gonna analyze it. It's gonna recognize that it's a module and you're gonna say import all. And now the counts module is installed on the Forge system. Now going forward, whether you're on Forge, on the cloud or self-hosting, the process going forward is exactly the same. We're gonna go into our gaming world. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to manage modules and make sure that you select the module that we've just installed, which is the Counts Manor. It's going to tell you that there's a dependency. We use Monk's active tile triggers for several of the features. Hit yes, and hit save module settings. It's gonna ask you that it's gonna reload. At this point, the module is now stored in the compendium. Now, I will briefly wanna talk about the difference between the compendium and the tabletop. I like to think of the compendium as my bookshelf where I have all my adventure books. And I like to think of the tabletop, which is the folders for the scene, the actors, the journals, and all that, as my tabletop. 
what we're going to do now is import from the compendium onto our tabletop the adventure module that counts manor. You're going to click in the compendium and you're going to notice a new folder called adventure. In there is the counts adventure. Click on the counts manor adventure and it's going to give you all the information that you're going to import in there. There is 18 actors, 17 items, 5 journals, 14 scenes, 1 playlist, and 7 folders. We also have our legendary supporters who are supporting me on this epic project and also links to the maps and the author and other information here. Now once you've seen this, at the bottom of the page there's an import uh, adventure. You're going to click import adventure and what you do in your scene directory you're going to have this folder that's going to have your battle maps, your theater of the mind maps, you're going to have all these actors in here, your items, your journal entries, and in this case we also have sound as well. Let's take a look at some of those tokens first that Tisu's put together because they're just amazing. We've got the new Boris character here, which is the young vampire boy, his father, uh, Count Lugosi. We also have, unfortunately, his wife, who's turned into a ghoul. And, of course, Margaret, the ghost. These tokens are just gorgeous. We, he's also included in here is Stoker, the dog that you find in the manor. You can join the party. We also have in this particular guide 11 new Theater of the Mind maps. Let's take a look at some of those. We've got this great new dungeon scene here, which I really like. There's Willa locked in the dungeon. Uh, we also have the manor outside, which we just saw. We have the crypt. We have the stairs down into the crypt. The ghost in the ballroom and so much more. Now, let's show you some special features from the journal that you're only going to find in V10. If we open up the journal, they're a little bit different than the previous ones. You notice that we have the manners in all one folder here, which makes it really easy. We've got the different locations in here. And if we bring up the manner map, which we have right here, we're going to go ahead and activate that. By the way, there's some sound. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm just going to turn it up briefly so you can hear it. The sound, the spooky sound of the manor. Now, in the ma in the manor here, we can click on the foyer, and these you also see these notes are also on the map themselves. So there's the foyer here. There's the main hall. So you can just click on that, and it will find that location in here. We also have some great artwork in here, which you can show to your players, including that cool raven skull cane. And all the text that you'll see with the ivory background can be shared and with your players. In addition, we have links to all the equipment back there and links to D&D Beyond. So, for instance, you want to know what you need to know from D&D Beyond for Curse of Strahd and you don't want to be thumbing through your Curse of Strahd book, well, you can just click on the link here and it'll take you right to that page in D&D Beyond, there's the main hall and all the information that you know about wisdom checks and everything you need to know as well. Now, there is something special in here that's unique to version 10, and I want, can't wait to show you that. For instance, let's say that you're in the library, and you notice in the desk that there's that letter to the count from the doctor. Well, that's actually an item now. Now, if you're familiar with Legends of Barovia, you know that we've been creating these gorgeous PDFs of the player handouts. Well, those player handouts, those gorgeous PDFs are actually now in Adventure version 10. Let's take a look at one of those. We've got the letter to the count. You're going to click load PDF, and there is the letter to Count Lugosi from his friend, Dr. John Seward. We also have that letter to the count from Strahd. Check that out. It's right there, even with Strahd's wax seal on it. These are so fun for the players to have. Now, there's two ways you can share this with your players. You can show it to your players by clicking the Show button up here. However, my personal recommendation is to share with that player by changing the configure ownership for all players to either owner or observer. Why would you want to do this? Well, this sharing this particular player handout by making it uh, the players as the owner and observer, they can access this 
throughout their adventure and throughout the campaign. As you know in Legends of Barovia, there are a lot of player handouts and a lot of them have clues, even puzzles and riddles in them, and giving those to the players so they can access the, at them at any time and look through them and read them it really helps pull them into the experience and allows them to have access to important information without having to take notes or think about it. Really, really cool feature. I'm really excited about this. And in the uh, um, Legends of Barovia Adventures, all those handouts are now actually in the adventures. Sh huge update, really excited about this. Now, let's talk about some things that we've been doing with Monk's active tile triggers. The first thing that you're gonna notice in each of these maps is you're gonna see some up arrows and some down arrows. These are Monk's active tile triggers that automatically teleport your player characters to another scene or within the same scene to another floor on the map. In this particular scene, we are in the manor, which is several floors. And I'm gonna drag a token in here to show you how this works. We've got a fake player token right here. And to drag them in here, and as that player goes up the stairs, all they have to do is stand on that arrow, and it's gonna take them to the next floor. They can continue to go up to the third floor, and boom, they're up on the third floor, and they go to the down arrows and move down. It's pretty easy, it does it all for them. Now you're also gonna notice another area in here using Monk's active tile triggers. In this case, there's a red box with the word 10 foot fall in it. These are areas that if the player steps in with their token, it's telling them right now, these are visible for the players, that if they step in there, they're gonna fall and suffer damage for falling 10 feet. Let's go ahead and do that. The player st steps into this area, they're automatically teleported, you heard the die roll, and that player just took two damage from a 10 foot fall from the second floor down. So if you see those red boxes, there'll be text in there warning the players if they stand into those red boxes, they could suffer some of the information that's in that text. Now what's really cool about these, these uh, uh, teleporters is we can teleport between scenes as well. For instance, let's say the players are, are up there on the top floor in the manor, they've managed to open up the iron door and they wanna head down to the crypts. Well, by stepping into that arrow, they are now actually, it's loading the scene and teleported the player down right into the crypts. And the player can actually head back up to the top of the ladder again. This works really, really well. You don't even have to change scenes. It changes scenes automatically for the players. Now let's talk about another feature using Monk's active tile triggers. We're gonna be looking at the Count's Crypt. We're gonna activate that. And here in the Count's Crypt, you're gonna notice these buttons in here. Now, these buttons allow you as the DM to change the environment and the scene because something has happened. In this particular case, this is the Dark Powers Ritual Chamber. And when the players step into this ritual chamber, it's a trap. The doors behind them lock, the room begins to fill up with purple smoke from these dragon heads mounted on the wall, but you can actually simulate that without having to click and lock all the doors by clicking the Start button. There, the room starts to change. You can see the purple smoke start to fill the room and all the doors are locked. The players are gonna have to solve a puzzle. You can even have an image here to share with the players of what they're seeing in the room. And there is a PDF puzzle for them to solve to figure out how to solve this puzzle to avoid and get out of this room. Once they've solved the puzzle, you hit stop, the doors are unlocked and the smoke dissipates. You're gonna also see some of these buttons to unlock and lock certain areas. For instance, in the fighting pits, once the players learn how to open the doors through a secret mechanism in the statue, it's gonna unlock the doors, but it's gonna shut and lock all of the doors to the cells of the cannibals. It's also gonna unlock the door to the hallway to the north by just clicking the unlock button. Vice versa, if we click lock, it does the inverse of that. This is a real simple way for you to do something while you're engaged with the players in there. You can see some of these new beautiful tokens in here. Here's Igor, the token for Igor. We've got a zombie down here. We also have the cursed cannibals. There they are. And we also have some lighted tokens as well, like the giant spider here, which is really cool. The white, some mice in here, or actually rats in here. Really, really excited about bringing this to you. We have one more special feature that we've also added, and that's automated traps. 
let me show you how this works here. Instead of going through the process of rolling the traps and figuring it out yourselves, you can take a player and set up the trap to trigger on a certain percentage. These particular traps here, you can see the floor is a different color and you can decide as the DM if they've noticed this through their passive perception or perhaps they're rolling looking for traps. If not, if a player passes over one of these colored areas, which is a monk's active tile trigger, it has a 20% chance of triggering the trap. We'll see. Oh, first player made it over. Second player. Third player triggered the trap. You notice that the ground changes, the tile changes, showing you that there's a pit there, and the player's been teleported in the pit. What's really nice about this particular situation is a player that's in the pit can't see out of the pit. They've suffered that 1d6 worth of fall damage. At this point, the players can decide how they're going to rescue the player that's fallen into the pit. These are some of the new features that you're going to see in version 10, along with those detailed PDF guides, the new artwork, and the new token packs. If you like this and you want to help me on this epic journey by creating these beautiful PDF guides for the entire community and getting access to these great Foundry Adventure modules you can by becoming a member. There's a link in the description below. And until next time, may all your roles be critically successful.